research evidence plays an important role in uh, policy making, but maybe not always in the way that researchers might hope it does. So sometimes research can be used as the basis for deciding not to do something rather than as the basis to decide to do something. The thing I think most important when it comes to having a dialogue with policymakers is always recognising the context uh, in which they're operating uh, and the relevance therefore of your research. When it comes to having a meeting with a Member of Parliament or with a Government Minister, I think there are a number of things that you need to keep in mind. And first and foremost of those is just how little time they're likely to have to spend with you because their days are diced up into many meetings and many obligations and expectations. First think about how this might be relevant to them in their work as a constituency Member of Parliament. What sort of things might they ask you that are relevant to their job of taking up issues on behalf of constituents. Meetings with ministers maybe last no longer than half an hour. And within that half an hour, an official will come and knock on the door to see whether the minister actually wants to spend any more time with you. So if you're leaving after half an hour, you know you've not fully landed your message. Send them stuff in advance. Make sure their offices have got some material to read, some of the key things you want to cover so they can use the time most effectively. A good briefing has to be short, to the point, but also then have the uh, necessary background material almost appended to it. That if you really want to follow through, you can read on that, that material. Don't assume that uh, they're going to read the whole of the paper. It's about thinking about what that abstract is that you're writing at the beginning, that summary of the key points, the thing, if they read no more than the title and maybe the first couple of sentences, they will understand this is why you're in a meeting with them today. This is the thing you're trying to explain to them as being relevant to developing policy or developing practice. When it comes to nurturing and developing relationships with policymakers, I think what you've got to bear in mind is that it's not just about you and your research and what you're trying to get across to them. It's about what they need from a relationship. Being flexible, being available, being able to not just respond on your own particular research, but uh, the broader area of your research and what it means for them as a policymaker, I think are the ways in which actually you're then someone they will pick up the phone to. You have to see this as being how you develop in their eyes as a credible expert that they can go to when they have questions. Of course that creates the opportunity and the context in which you can talk about your particular latest research. It's an ongoing process. The political cycle, the electoral cycle, the financial cycles of governments, both local and national, are such that something may come up a year, two years, three years later when suddenly you have the opportunity to really land that research and make a difference to policy or practice. When it comes to overcoming barriers to developing a dialogue with policymakers and politicians, being able to have real impact for your research, it is first and foremost about understanding that it isn't a one-off transaction you're trying to enter here, because the payback will be much greater if you get that relationship right. I think it's important to step back and take note of the fact that sometimes we dehumanise uh, politicians in the way we think about them. Uh, thinking about them as human beings and what they're trying to do uh, to try and improve things, even if you don't necessarily agree with their political ideology, is quite an important thing. So I think quite a lot of this is about the psychology of developing a relationship. Improving access to research. Think about how you emote, in other words connect emotionally, how you relate your evidence and what, how credible that is, and how you demonstrate the economic impact, the value for society, the value for government, I think are the ways in which you can get your message across most effectively. There's a phrase, uh, the elevator pitch, uh, and I think that this is um, absolutely what you need to have in mind, that you need to be able to reduce and I think distill the essence of what it is your research is demonstrating that can make a difference for the public, can make a difference for that policymaker's agenda. So talking about the impact, talking about real lives, uh, can make, I think, the biggest connection to politicians who, in the end, are in the business of trying to make an impact on behalf of their constituents.